Hey, Cav Cop here. I'm doing series two of the two part series on the X95 Tavor that I did. Had to break the video down because YouTube only gives me 15 minutes as a new content creator. If you would do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe my channels so I can make it grow and bring longer videos. You can decide what you want to watch. You're an adult. If you don't like something, skip, pass, swipe left. If it's something you're interested in, tune in, enjoy. Appreciate it. You can get your typical old 20 round military mags. They'll slide right in, pop right out. Your mag pull type magazines, you put them in, you drop them out. Your uh, lancer type that have the metal lips on them, clip them in, drop them out. You can do a double type magazine if you have them. One thing about the Tavor, because of the way it's set up as a bullpup and how your grip is, they'll slide in like this and it's not a problem holding it. Um, when you shoot, stuff tends to go forward. Like I talked about before, mounting scopes. I like to push my scopes further forward because when you shoot, it's going to slide forward. Otherwise, as you shoot, your scope may move forward. These rounds can go forward. So on a Tavor, it's good to flip this magazine around and have it facing the opposite way. If you drop the magazine and switch sides with it, there tends to be a problem with where your wrist hits trying to get a good grip on it. So you really can't get a good grip. If it's flipped around, when you do the switch, you'll end up having the magazines pointing the other way and you're not going to have any issues with where your wrist is and everything. So like I said, you can use the coupled magazines. I just recommend flipping one backwards. That way when you do mag changes, you're always going to have the magazine sticking out on this side. And it's not going to get in the way of your wrist. You can use the Surefire Coffin Mags. Um, this is a 60 round one. They also have a 100 round one. And when you get these in there, they work fine. They line up with your wrist just good and it's easy to hold overall. The only one that's really a problem, I think, is the Surefire D60s. We'll get the Surefire one. They fit inside okay. This one's loaded all the way up. And you can hold them, but they do get in the way of your wrist, similar to how the coupled magazines were. So it does get in your wrist a little bit. Could you fire it like this? Yes, you could, but it's a little bit awkward. Um, just one of those things you have to make up your mind and figure out what works best for you. But I think the 60-round coffin magazines are probably about as big as you want to go. The D60s are a little extreme for the Tavor, I think. One of the things I debated about replacing on here with the Israeli ones is the Israelis have this uh, aluminum metal butt pad that goes on here and it really reduces the size of it by a bit. However, it does take away from the overall length. So you get this big, pretty soft rubber here, um, butt pad. Recoil on it, it's average. I don't know it needs a huge butt pad like this. I think for the United States they did it to make the overall length requirements meet. But they do offer other ones, just the laws you got to follow for mounting these up and everything. One of the real nice things about the Tavor is the size because it's a bullpup. And also where you grip it at, right around here, is kind of the balance point of it. So it's easy to hold this weapon up versus an AR-15 or something else where your grip's back here and the barrel's heavy. Your wrist will kind of start tipping down. It's hard to hold it one-handed. With this, if you had to clear rooms, go through buildings, do a lot of tactical stuff... You're able to use your other hand to do things, and the rifle really balances well. So the bullpup design is pretty neat. Other countries use them, um, whether it's England or Australia. Um, they're well known for their bullpup designs and everything, and this one from Israel I think is really well designed, and it does have its purpose, so it's something to consider depending on what type of operations and missions you do. I'll go ahead and show you a basic uh, disassembly real quick. All right, disassembly is easier if you rest it on its barrel and everything. But everything's done from the back over here. Um, there's a pin. There's two pins here to take out the trigger guard part. But this back pin right here is what basically helps you with the disassembly of it. So all you have to do is you can push it with your finger almost and just pull it out. It's a retained pin, so it's going to hold in here. Basically, just drop it out and then slide the uh, bolt group out. And this right here, like I said, is the long piston part of it. 
It does have a rotating bolt that works with it. And this right here just works back and forth. If you want to disassemble this further to swap it out and everything, I'm not going to go through all of it. But basically, if you lift up on this piece right here, you see how it's sticking out. Then from there, you can end up popping out the pin that's here. Push in a little bit to relieve tension on the bolt, and then you can end up taking it all apart. Once you put it back in, this pin has a notch or a flat side to let you know which way it goes in. And there's a groove on top to uh, line up where this rod right here goes. Then you can push it back, and it's the rod. And that's basically all there is for the bolt carrier group. It's real simple. Inside, it's kind of like a hollow tube. They also did make it to where you can take the uh, trigger group out on it. And I'll show you real quick how that's done. Basically, the two pins that are on this side get popped out. Use this tool. You can do it with a pistol round or piece of metal, but basically, these end up coming out. Of course, it's going to be a little bit tough now that I want to do it. These pull out completely. And like I said, if you're standing it up on its barrel, it's a lot easier to do. This lever right here pulls out. You can over-exaggerate pulling it out a little bit. I don't know if I'll do it upside down like this. Now it wants to be a pain. But ultimately, oh, this little trigger pack right here pulls out. So this right here is the trigger pack. From what I understand, there is a different one that the U.S. made rifles get versus the select fire Israeli ones and everything. But it's a semi-simple trigger design. They do make aftermarket uh, trigger groups for this that you can swap out. I think with the Geisel trigger that's in there, the lightning bow, it works just fine. But that's basically all there is. Once you look down here, it's like an open cavity. Probably won't be able to show it that well. Let me try. Man, I won't show that well. But it's basically just an open cavity inside of here where everything is so you can get the things and easily clean it. You really don't need to remove the trigger assembly maybe every once in a while for some detailed cleaning or if there's issues. But basically it's just pulling the uh, bolt and guts out. To put it back in, basically open it up. Make sure that long tab side is there. Closes all the way. Push your pins in. Piston system, same way. You just grab it make sure the upper parts up the bolts towards the bottom side because it is piston driven slides in when you go to close it there'll be a little bit of spring resistance to it put it in and it's basically done if you want to charge it charge it back to the rear weapons on safe try to pull the trigger it won't fire put it on fire you hear it fall charge it release to the reset and put it back on safe but like i said it's a pretty neat little weapon system one of the cool things out of israel i guess in recent years they've made some uh, shotguns and other stuff but to me this is a pretty neat little setup like i said there's different options you have with it the old ones did come with a cleaning kit i guess i'll do a quick dump of this cleaning kit real quick i don't know that the new ones come with it but it comes with a lens cloth in case you have any optics for it Comes to your basic uh, cleaning rod system, similar to an AR-15. You got your chamber brush and bore brush. You have a larger bristle in here to clean out the inside area for carbon buildup and stuff. Little dust brush if you want to get the dust off it and everything. And then you also end up getting like an oil bottle. Another part that came with this is a sight adjustment tool thing. Um, this is it right here. Basically, if you need to make little adjustments and uh, mess with stuff, you can do some stuff with this right here. But other than that, this uh, barrel takedown tool, if you plan on doing barrel changes and other stuff, but make sure you go over the instruction part because you do have to remove the hand guards and the forward setup with a charging handle before you can get into doing the barrel release and everything. But that pretty much covers it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Cav Cop out.